Hello guys, it's Elmer, your fire protection guy. Welcome back to this channel. Today our job is to replace a Brook addressable fire indicating panel, an FT128 fire, fire panel, to a Petronix F220. Why are we replacing a Brooks 128? The main objective here is to make the system updated. And it's very hard to program this system if you are not a senior technician or a good programmer. Uh, and other than that, it's not a friendly system. It's not even a versatile system. The new Petronix that I am always installing are versatile and very user-friendly. We are going to install extra detector in this building where I am working right now. So I have suggested to one of, to my customer that this fire panel must go and we can add an extra detector and anyone, any technician will be aware of the new fire panel that I'm going to install so they can program, they can do anything that they want because it's user friendly, the F220 Petronics. Okay, our procedure. We're going to download the configuration of the system. And then the second one is we're going to test the system. The third one is to check what are the connected cables in the system. Where is the loop circuit? Where are the bell connections? Where is the occupant warning connections? Where are the cable for the speaker? So we're going to start testing first the system if it's working. So what, before you do anything, you must know the normal of the system before you do any changes or any updating or a, whatever you want to do. Just check the normal condition of the system. Your attention please, this is a test. Please disregard all the emergency warning, this is a test only. So I already made my announcement, now let's go to the test. Access. The access code is 2222 and then we go to service, accept and then we activate okay. the third, we go to maintenance. Maintenance, accept, we go to alarm and then I choose 0101, address zone number 1, address 01, 0101. Take note, this is not connected to the fire brigade, so it's a local system. And then we accept. There you go, there's your alarm. Alright, it's not automatic. So it's working. So reset, silence the buzzer, silence the alarm, press the reset button, clear. So it's working. Our next job is to download the configuration or the program of the system. So in this type of one to type of fire indicating panel, the one to eight, you need a dongle. So this is the dongle, how a dongle looks like. So this is only uh, you are only allowed to use this, and it's under my name, of course. So it's registered under my name, and you have to plug it in your laptop so you can get access. So we're going to use the version 1.10 software for this panel so you have to be very careful you have to use the same version otherwise it will not work and of course it's still running on Windows XP okay this is my laptop my Windows XP laptop and where's my dongle my dongle is here okay sorry Okay, this is my Windows XP small teeny weeny laptop. Okay, and this is my dongle. So I will going to plug my dongle anywhere. All right, that's my dongle. So I will be allowed to access the file system. And this is my nine pin female cable. So a male to female and then to my converter. I'm going to install a converter there. So it's working so I tried to download the configuration I use the same version but it does not allow me to go in, to download because I don't have the right password so I 
tried 22, 22, I tried 22, 22, 22, and then eight sixes or six eights, it does not work. So I think the system must go. Now let's go into trace what's in the fire indicating panel. This is the loop circuit. That's a loop one. So we're going to investigate what's the voltage of that. Right now it's 16.45 volts. Okay, what are these bunch of cables here? So let's investigate what are these cables. Okay, so let's check one by one. If they have the same power as what we have in the loop circuit, then that means that is the another loop cable, right? So that's six volts. So the rest of this, as I check it one by one, it has the same voltage of 16.4, same as the loop, same as this loop circuit. So loop in and loop out. Now, this is the speaker line. So our power for the speaker line is 12.33 volts, all right? So it's the same all the way because this one have one loop in for the speaker and these are all supervisory speaker lines. So that means one and then four out. Now we have another cable which I am not aware of what it was or what it is. So this one, that is the cable that we're going to check. There's no power on that cable, that cable. So let's test the system what that cable is. So we initiate an alarm. Okay, access uh, password 9876. You can use 2222, but I use 9876 because I used to it. And then I go to maintenance. And then accept, then I go to I go to activate zone, I use 0101 and then isolate the occupant warning and then accept. Uh, sorry, wrong one. This one, oh sorry. Accept, 0101, then accept. So we got, we got the alarm. Let's silence that for a while. So let's check. We have power in that particular line. That means this is output. It might be a trip of the air condition or something, all right? So we're going to check that later on after we replace the file system. That means we have to provide power to that cable if there is an active alarm.
me introduce you to this fire indicating panel. Okay, so I already completed my wirings except that I have some missing module. Okay, let's start with this one. Why do I have a bunch of cables here? What happened is the fire, the old fire panel has become a junction box of these cables. So this is a, a four-story building. So what the installer did was run a cable from the fire panel so that the fire panel is the reference point and then went up to one stairway and then comes back here. Same as the other stairway. So there were two stairways, so that's another two pair. And then another one in the basement one and basement two. So this is all these cables. Now the speaker, it also run four pair of speaker lines. So these are my four spare speaker lines. What I have here is I have a missing splitter. Okay, I'm going to buy a splitter and then later on connect this individually to the speaker, uh, speaker splitter, and then that's the amplifier. Now this is my loop cable. That's my loop circuit, I already completed that. And this is my output, a 24 volts output from the old system. I have not verified yet where it came from or what it's serving. Maybe the mechanical ventilation or the car park exhaust fan downstairs. And that's this area. This is my cable supplying 24 volt DC. For today, that's all I can do. My apprentice right now is replacing all of those field detectors, the smoke detector and the heat detector in both stairway and car park. So he replacing all the bases at the moment because I haven't done any programming. So there's no address in every detector that we are going to replace. So basically everything must be compatible to the system. So that's it for this day. I'm going to come back tomorrow to commission the system and add extra detector on my third day. Our second day today. So we're going to install an audio distribution module or a splitter for our speakers. There were four separate speaker lines. So we have to install this one, which I don't have before. So that is the location. Let's do it. And this will go here, so individually. It has its own end of line resistor that we are going to install in the field. Right now we are testing the speaker in the car park. So the circuit in the car park was the only one that had the problem. Uh, there is a short circuit in any of the speaker. There was no problem before. I don't know why it just come up. So my system right now is telling me that my amplifier system is telling me that there is a short circuit. One, two, one, two, yeah, one, two. Testing one, two, testing one, two. So we're checking one by one all the speakers in the car park. I think there are only four speakers, I mean one speaker in the car park. So slowly probably we're going to get uh, the cost of the short circuit pop in the amplifier. Okay, this is the circuit for the car park. Every time I plug in, 
there is a fault come out after, uh, let's say, 30 seconds. For example, let's bring it to number four. Once I plug it to number four, see, number four, I have only an open circuit light. So we plug it in. What will happen it is number four will create a short circuit fault. At present, all the speaker or the horn speaker in the car park are working. But after a few seconds, a short circuit fault will come out. That means all the speaker in the car park will be disabled immediately because of a short circuit fault. So we found the problem. Because basement one and basement two was installed on a separate line. So there is one cable coming from basement one and then another cable coming from basement two. So they met at the fire panel. So these two cable was joined together to create one circuit. The problem arises when the guy who did the installation put an end of line resistor in basement one and in basement two. So that means two end of line resistor. So that's create a short circuit in the system because that is not the actual end of line resistor required by the amplifier. So I have completed all the job on my third day. So thank you for watching. This is Elmer, your fire protection guy. I'll see you in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.